Hey guys, it's Sarah here. I just want to give everyone a heads up that the discussion in this video assumes that you have a knowledge of the Azura High and Lightbringer prophecies. If you need to brush up, check out some of my other videos or in the description below for more information. This is one of four theory videos for Lightbringer possibilities, so please feel free to check them all out. They are linked in the description as well. First off, I want to state that I firmly believe that Dawn, the ancestral sword of House Dane, was the original Lightbringer and that a member of House Dane was the original Azor Ahai. That being said, just because Dawn was the original Lightbringer doesn't mean it will be Lightbringer this time around. So I'm going to start out with why I think Dawn was the original Lightbringer and then discuss if it's possible for it to be the Lightbringer in our current story. We know the last time the White Walkers came thousands of years ago, the last hero, Azor Ahai, ended the long night with his flaming sword, Lightbringer. Following night comes morning, or the dawn, which brings with it the light of day. It is a Lightbringer. The sword of House Dane is named Dawn, and its wielder is given the title, the Sword of the Morning, as was the case with Sir Arthur Dane. This could be very symbolic. In House Dane, one must earn the right to wield Dawn. It is not passed down from father to first son, as other ancestral swords in Westeros families are, which makes it very unique and could possibly be an honor to the sword for completing a very important destiny. It makes me wonder if there's a significant reason for this. House Dane is also one of the oldest houses in Westeros with the blood of the first men, so it's very possible that they were in Westeros at the time of the Long Night. There's a lot of mystery surrounding House Dane as well, and their family words haven't been revealed to us yet, which seems strange to me, and I really feel like they have this big secret, and for one of them to have been Azor High, and for Dawn to be Lightbringer, would be such a huge thing to reveal. We also know that the forging of Lightbringer required a blood sacrifice, and there may be some symbolism here with the losses of Arthur and Ashara Dane in the story so far. Dawn is described as being milk white with the properties of Valyrian steel while not actually being Valyrian steel. It is said that Dawn was forged from a falling star or a meteorite, so some theorists believe that the Long Night was triggered by a celestial event, so if that's true, then that can possibly connect Dawn to the Long Night. Dawn was forged before the times of Valyria, so it wasn't made of Valyrian steel, but if you think about it, Dawn and Lightbringer are so far the only two significant swords we hear of that were forged before the creation of Valyrian steel, and both the creation stories for these swords involve the imagery of hearts. Dawn was forged from the heart of a falling star, and Lightbringer was tempered by being plunged into the heart of the forger's wife, Visa Nisa. So Lightbringer wasn't necessarily a flaming sword, but it could have been a metaphor, and a milk-white blade would certainly reflect the light and was made from a falling star, and stars are generally associated with fire. Another outlook on this could be that in the forging of the sword in his wife Nisa Nisa, um, the original Lightbringer, if she was a Dane, she would have been considered a falling star, because she's dying and she is a Dane, and the seat of House Dane is called Starfall. On Reddit, I read that the Legend of Dawn and the Legend of Lightbringer could be two halves of the same myth. The Legend of Dawn describes where to get the metal, and the use of the word heart draws a connection between the two. The myth of Azor Ahai explains the magic behind it. And Megatron Make Large Huge commented that they think the significance of the falling star material is that the others are killed by materials born in intense heat. A fallen star is an even more extreme source of heat than volcanoes or dragonfire. So here's a quote from A Feast for Crows. I found one account of the Long Night that spoke of the last hero slaying others with the blade of Dragonsteel. Supposedly, they could not stand against it. Dragonsteel, John frowned. Valyrian steel? That was my first thought as well, Sam said. So, it's possible that Dragonsteel and Valyrian steel are two different things, and it's possible that dragons may have been involved with Forging Dawn, but this is the part of my theory that doesn't quite fit, as I believe dragons weren't around yet at the time of Dawn's forging or the Long Night, and the Danes don't have much in terms of relations to dragons that we've seen in the world so far. Uh, please feel free to check out my theory video on Dragonsteel versus Valyrian steel, which I will link here and in the description below. Um, which actually just brought a thought into my head. I mean, what if Valyrian steel is made from fire dragons, but Dawn, or Lightbringer, is made from using ice dragons? What? So, like, there's no evidence for that, but ice dragons have been mentioned numerous times in the series, and for there to only be one sword like Dawn would make sense because ice dragons are notoriously hard to uh, find and control, I guess. I don't know. But what if? It would be so cool. Alright, so where is Dawn now? 
Many people assume that Ned brought it back to Starfall when he visited there after the Tower of Joy incident, but others believe that he kept it in Winterfell. Now that we know that Jon is the son of Rhaegar and Lyanna, not a Shardane, as some have theorized. And, I mean, this is show stuff, but I mean, I'm pretty sure it's going to be in the book too. Um, it seems John's most likely to be the candidate for Zora High. I'm not sure what the significance of Don would be to him at this point in the story. So he's not of House Dane, and he shouldn't have the sword passed down to him. I guess for those who believe that Danny is a Zora High, or for those who believe that she's the secret child of Ashara Dane, I guess this theory might work better for you. But like I said, I don't think Dawn will be Lightbringer for our current hero. I believe that Dawn has already done its duty and that Azora High Reborn needs to have a Lightbringer Reborn. So that's my theory on Dawn. Uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. And I've got a couple more videos for you, so please check them out. Take care.